So, now that you know how to start a project, let's talk about the controls that you will need to know in order to manipulate the engine. If we just start a new first person demo project, it will lead us right here. From this point, let's start with the camera controls. Now, if you're coming from Unity or Maya, the controls are basically the same as all other industry standard software. Hold Alt and left click to rotate the camera, right click to zoom in and out, you can also scroll up and down, and middle click to pan. You do also have the ability to use the arrow keys to move around to control the view as if you were playing a game, and if you hold shift while doing this, you will slow the camera down gradually. If you press Alt though, the camera will stop abruptly. And of course, as usual, you can press F to focus on any object that you have selected. And if you press F10, you will be able to toggle the menu away for a clearer view. Now here on the viewport, you will see we have some options here, and they relate to how we interact with the objects in our environment. For example, if we click on this box here, you will see the classic gizmos pop up. And you'll then be able to move its position by pressing W and dragging the X, Y, and Z arrows. If you want to move it along two axes at the same time, for example X and Y, just click in between and you'll be able to drag them without worrying about messing up the Z. And if you're dragging around an object and you hit end on your keyboard, it will snap to the floor automatically. You can change its rotation by pressing E and dragging it on the X, Y, or Z axis. If you press R, you can change its scale by again dragging it on its X, Y, and Z axis. And all of these functions can be accessed manually by clicking their icons up here. And probably one of the most useful things is if you hold alt and middle click the gizmo, you'll be able to change the pivot point of the object. So this can be useful if you need to rotate an object from a specific point. If you hold alt and left click the gizmo normally, you will duplicate the object in the direction that you are dragging. And if you hold shift and left click the gizmo, you will move the camera with the object as you are dragging it. Now, next to the object controls, you will see a globe. This allows you to swap between local and world rotation. If you're coming from a 3D software, you will understand that sometimes you want to rotate an object in relation to its own orientation, but when you turn this button on, it switches from local orientation to world orientation. Usually, local is more important because you can tell what direction an object is facing, but global is useful when you just want to drag things around in your environment. This next icon controls surface snapping. If you left click the middle of your object and drag it around, it's basically free and goes where you drag exactly. But if you have surface snap on, when you try and do the same thing, you will see it snaps your object to hug the thing that your mouse is closest to. Now to the right of that, you will see the grid snap option. When this is active, that means as you try and drag your object, you will see it snap along the different grid positions in 3D virtual space. You can change how big or small these snap increments are by clicking on this number over here. If you disable it, you will see that the object no longer tries to snap along the grid axis. Further down, we have the same thing for rotation. Rotation. So when you rotate your object, you will notice that it snaps at a perfect 10 degree interval. If you want to change it to something like 45 instead, you can set that here. Or disable snapping entirely for a smoother rotation. And once again, we have the exact same thing for scale. It's normally set to 25%, but you can change it to scale at half or 10 times or any other number that you want. And as usual, you can disable it entirely if you just need to arbitrarily scale things. And further down, you will see the camera speed. This controls the movement of your view as you pan around and move to adjust your scene. If you increase it to 8, your view will move super fast, and this also affects the speed of moving the view based on the arrow keys as well. There's also a multiplier right under, so if you just want even more or slow control, the multiplier can allow you to go beyond the limits of this value. And this just gives you multiple views of your scene. If you scroll out, you will see that we have side views, top views, it normally defaults to wireframe, but you can change it to whatever type of shading you want. To go back, just go to the standard view and hit the maximize window. On the left side, you have other options, the most important one showing you your FPS. I recommend having it on even if you don't need it just because it's kind of useful as a game dev. This view is where you can control what you can use to jump to specific camera angles. Specifically, it's the basic traditional left, right, top, down, forward, and back views. And here you can select different material views. You'll see the different types of modes that you can select from. Unlit just shows you everything like it does in a 3D software like Blender. Wireframe shows you the polygons of all the 3D models. And Lit shows you how light interacts with the environment. Show just lets you decide what you want to see. If you don't want to see the fog, you can turn it off over here. If you hate the atmosphere, then you can just get rid of it. No worries at all. And if you ever mess something up, you can control Z to undo and control Y to redo. Anyway, you can mess around until you get comfortable, but those are the controls for your new system. Hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.